Hey, everybody. Dom Castro, CMS Wire Managing Editor here with our latest contributor video interview. We're going to have Frank Palermo, our Virtusa Global Technical Consulting Leader. Frank, how's it going? Going good, Dom. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure having you on. And, you know, quite the little, uh, you know, I think the kids will call you like an OG. They call you of like CMS Wire contributors. You've been here quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, you guys have been kind to to my uh, to my work, so I appreciate the publishing, and uh, it's been a lot of good topics. I think we've been, especially on the customer experience side and the audience management side, for sure. Yeah, and we're, and we're totally, you know, doubling down on customer experience. It's like our number one engagement, you know, in terms of articles, it gets the eyeball. So, I'm super happy to talk to you about today's topic. We have a four part series on AI started last week. And today we're embedding this video into article number two. But before we get into that, let's give a little sense of who Frank Palermo is and, you know, your company and kind of how you landed there. Sure, sure. So uh, I work for Virtusa. We're a global IT services firm, about 35,000 people, $2 billion in revenue, but really specialize in a lot of the, you know, hardcore software development engineering services and we made a lot of investments in the areas of cloud and the areas of art artificial intelligence um, and really a very smart domain orientation to the market. So in, in industries like banking, financial services, healthcare, life sciences, as well as our telco media and technology businesses. So uh, yeah, it's been a great run here and uh, I look forward to, uh, you know, uh, the discussion today. Yeah. And Great. Well, thanks for the, the recap of, of the company and what you do. Like, so Frank, this is great. You know, it's a, obviously a perfect time to be talking about AI. And I think you 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 kind of hit on something a lot of people haven't been in, in terms of talking about AI. Everyone's hyped up on what generative AI is doing, what ChatGPT is doing. And it's like, hey, this is brand new. This has never been out there before. And you kind of bring the reality back and say, this is decades in the making. So I love the first column, day two, uh, column number two was out today. What was the inspiration behind this, given this big historical uh, sort of step back? Yeah, you know, this is a space I have followed for quite some time. Um, you know, even back in my days with IBM, I just feel like uh, artificial intelligence has been something of a, of a you know, goal for, you know, for the industry, for many organizations. And we've seen various aspects of it. Simple things like the auto completion on your email is actually using elements of what some of the you know, large language models are doing today to some of what we've seen with the, with the Watson platform. And so I, I do think it, it is powering more than people realize today, but it's also this technology that doesn't exactly you know, uh, invent itself overnight. And I think I didn't really see this kind of lineage analysis that said, hey, this is seven decades now in the making, and there's been a lot of fits and starts that have happened along the way. And a lot of the elements of what we see in Gen AI, uh, Gen AI in these large language models are things that were really rooted, in, you know, you know, literally decades ago. Uh, so I wanted to make that connection and, and you know, because I think the future holds a lot of that similar evolution that's, that's going to be required as things do evolve over time. And, you know, in the big scheme of things, this technology is still very much in the early innings. There's still a lot we have to figure out around governance, you know, around the training, the protection of intellectual property. So there's a lot, lot to cover in this series. And I kind of felt like it was a good uh, let's get under the hood and, and tackle some of these uh, difficult uh, uh, topics. Yeah. And, and why, why the, how did this happen in November, when, November of 2022, when ChatGPT debuted from OpenAI? Like, what was the difference? Why did it get over the hump and just capture the world? Because we've been talking about AI, but not at this level. We really have it in terms of what it can actually do for changing the world of work. Yeah, no, a great question. And I, I think it's really, I would say, two major dimensions. First dimension is this perfect storm of what I'll call the the the, the technology landscape, right? I think the cloud, mm -hmm. I think specifically what it, it, NVIDIA is doing with the GPU compute power, which is the foundation of how these models are 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 actually uh, you know computed, uh, as well as the you know. Uh, uh, algorithms and, you know, things like a transformer architecture, which, you know, got publicized back in 2017, really all came together at a perfect time. And I think that's what made the technology platform 
work. But then I think the simple thing that 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 happened was, you know, AI has always been something uh, of uh, not easy for an end consumer to actually integrate with an experience, right? It was something that you saw on Jeopardy with with Watson or something. Right. Like how do I, as a consumer, actually touch and leverage, you know, AI? And the simple idea of this, like, chatbot, you know, initially chat GPT and then Bard, this made it so accessible and so easy to actually uh, interact, right? It felt more like a conversation you know, when you think about the strings and the prompts that you can string along, it really feels like there's somebody in the room with you as an advisor providing you, you know, answers and content. Yeah. And I think that was a big aha moment for many that, uh, you know, listen, this thing became the fastest growing app ever. It, it surpassed TikTok, which is just quite yeah. amazing in, in in weeks, not not even months and years, right? So um, it, it certainly hit a chord. And now, now I think people are really, uh, looking around saying, okay, how do we apply this? You know, how do I apply this in the context of the consumer world and to, in the business world? And I think that's the real excitement that's ahead of us. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, for me as a journalist, it's so exciting because, you know, the the big use case for me right now is not, is not asking it, Hey, write me an article on customer experience. It's like, Hey, take this podcast transcription that I did with my source and give me the details of it. You know, give me the takeaways. Give me the high level right. takeaways, and then summarization even, capabilities. Right? Yeah, the summarization and is is outstanding because man, how many hours of brain power did I use to try to transcribe a nine thousand word podcast before? Right, <laughs> no, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, and then not to mention, there's an AI tool that helps transcribe it to begin with, and then you come in with the with the analysis and the takeaways. It's just fascinating. It's it's helped us greatly, but. If you could, you know, I don't know, predict or, or kind of give a sense of what you think a customer experience leader um, will find the most useful as we go forward with generative AI, like where are the big wins going to be? Because you've seen a lot of reports that customer support agents are going to be replaced um, by generative AI. But I like to look at it as how generative AI is going to infuse into customer experience leadership and, and support and service. You know, where yeah. do you see the big wins coming? Yeah, no, great question. And, you know, and I think it's a first thing is a mental leap. I think with every, you know, new technology age and advancement, there's always this, you know, fear that settles in around, hey, is this going to take away my job? And, you know, is is end of my, you know, domain as, as I know it. And, you know, listen, there's no question that there's a, a set of, you know, maybe jobs and roles that can get automated over time, but that's happened historically as well. So I don't think anything yeah. is different here. Uh, but I think the way you're thinking about it as a kind of assistive technology, right, even in a creative context, right? I mean, you, you know, I, I don't think that, you know, we're going to lose that creative touch. I actually think it's going to raise the game on on a lot of the content creators, right? Because, no, you know, now you're going to have to really think about the positioning of, of an article, the the, the way, uh, you know, you want to bring different topics and analogies in, something that, is not necessarily going to come out of a out of a Gen AI application. That's going to be very much factual in nature, um, and 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 you know not necessarily creative in nature. You, you know, and again, there's shades between this. But I think that you know uh, content uh, creation is still very safe. And even as you look at some of what's happening on the imaging and even some of the user experience design automation that's happening. Again, I look at it, it's all, instead of starting with a blank sheet of paper, you actually get a canvas with some color on it. And I think yeah. that could be in some ways um, stimulating of, of thought, right? Because how many times does that page stay empty for, for too long, right? So yeah, right. it's a catalyst for, for thinking about new ideas and where AI leaves off, the creator can now take off, if you will. So, so in some ways, it's, it can be an interesting launch pad for for the future. Yeah. Um. And then, you know, I, I think there's a lot of connections that need to be made. You know, in in the future, when I think about uh, experiences, right? You know, to the the current paradigm. You know, we went from a very textural experience in in mobile and web to more video experiences, you know, we were just talking about apps like TikTok that really went viral as well because of that kind of, you know, video experience. And, um, uh, you know, I think AI will now power in, in three to five years. A lot of the experiences we were used to will now be more conversational. And I think this has always been an aspiration 
Uh, and for, you know, th this is now, I think, the foundation or the tipping point of where we'll start to see that uh, in practice. And then that's pretty exciting, I, I think, to, to think that things move to this. There's still a lot of mechanics you need to do, even when you're shopping, even when you're making reservations. Wouldn't it be much better to have a conversation with a travel website to say, here's where I want to go. Here's the flight times I'm looking for. Here's the cost I want to play. I love these types of hotels and have the you know, Gen AI, you know, expert travel bot and go away and, and plan this for you. It yeah. just feels a much more engaging, enriching experience. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like uh, Google is a lot of work now. <laughs> it used to be Google made it work easier for you to find this stuff. Now we're like, because back in the day we were like, I had to go to the library and look up an encyclopedia. Oh, that's easy now. I'll go to, I'll go to Google. Oh, wait a minute. Right. I'm not doing Google anymore. I'll go to AI. Oh, wait a minute. I'll go to TikTok. I'll tell you what, TikTok really, I mean, we're kind of getting off topic, but, you know, to give you a perfect example of how we're changing the way we consume content is my wife, you know, I told her, hey, uh, Google that drive-in that we're going to. I want to get a lay, the lay of the land, how to drive up, when to come in. And she just sent me a link to a TikTok video that was like one minute. And I'm like, I know everything I need to know now, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Frank, final thing for me is, uh, you know, this is part two of the four-part series. So, Give our readers a little uh, preview of parts three and four. What do we get coming in the AI series? Yeah, so I think in uh, in part three, we we really kind of looked at now, you know, again, just a quick refresher. One was really linking the, that history back and two was kind of going under the hood from a really understanding the how LLMs, how Gen I works. And then three was really looking at this now, what I call the new Cold War, the new global race around AI and how important it is, not just for businesses, for countries. And, you know, we're fortunate here in the US, we still have a dominance here, but I, I, I think that's a point in time, you know, China and other countries are, are investing heavily in this area. So we take a look at the changing landscape and, you know, who the players are that are emerging globally, you know, and there's there's some, you know, Google was really one of the pioneers back to the deep mind days. And then, you know, Microsoft really kind of came out of the blue with, you know, its partnership with OpenAI, all the investments they've made in Azure. So I think we're going to continue to see this leapfrogging of the of the players here as this evolves. And my hope is Raising Tide raises all boats right here in terms of the innovation uh, capacity here. Um, and then the last part of the series kind of looks now at what, what's ahead. What are the things we we need to consider from a from a governance, you know, from how, how do we deal with bias? How do we deal with the, you know, a transparency around model training? How do we, you know, deal with intellectual property? There's so much yet, yet to, uh, to to think about in, in terms of how uh, this technology is applied. It is powerful, but, you know, on the other side of power becomes danger if it's used in, in, improperly. And there's, you know, probably nefarious actors out there that that are yeah. just thinking about ways how to use this in 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 in, in not, not very good ways. So uh, yeah, there's there's work to do there. That you know, uh, the fourth part of the series kind of looks at that uh, uh, dimension. Cool, uh, awesome. Well, we're looking forward to it, Frank. Frank Palermo here, CMSY contributor. Thank you for your uh, many many articles. <laughs> You've been the OG, like I said earlier, of uh, of CMSY contributors. So we we're glad to have you in the community. And thanks for this uh, fascinating series. Uh, I'm looking forward to the final two parts. Great. Thank you, Dom. Always a pleasure. All right. Have a good one. Bye now. Bye now. <laughs>